Hello and welcome to the Evolve eScribe software. Uh, now this is going to be a fairly in-depth look at the, uh, the software. Now this is used for programming and monitoring your DNA 200 device. Uh, okay, so let's crack on. Um, let's start with the file menu. Uh, here we've got the, the new, which is reset to Evolve standard. Uh, we can open, we can save our uh, settings here. So if I was to save all this, then that will be my my standard, for example. Um, edit, undo, redo, that sort of thing. Internet, I'm not going to click on because that's got my personal email address on it. But you use that to, uh, to you register on the Evolve website and then you can use it to send diagnostic uh, information and that sort of thing to Evolve. Uh, options, well, that's automatically checked for updates. And if it, basically the firmware updates and the eScribe updates come bundled as one. So down here, if there's an update, you get this little yellow ribbon thing appearing. You just click on update now, it installs it. Next time you click a device, uh, it prompts you to upload the firmware. It's it's that, it's that simple, really. Tools here, we've got um, several things. There's, there's a calculator there, so uh, two plus two. Yeah, four, that sort of thing, yeah. Uh, production utility. Now, I can, I can save things out and that sort of stuff, but... Uh, I could put in a model name, so Matt's DNA 200, yeah. The firmware file I'd like to be using for production. Uh, the settings files, which I've uh, you created from uh, from the file menu back up top here. I can do certain tests before it goes out, that sort of thing, but I'm not interested in that really. Uh, serial, uh, serial terminal, we'll cover that a bit later on. That's real nerdgasm. System information, that brings up system information of the PC this is running on. And at this point, I'd like to point out, this only runs on PCs, not on Macs or Linux. Uh, Evolve have promised, apparently, uh, a version for OS X, but, well, that's not forthcoming just yet. I can reboot the device. There's a hard or soft reboot. I can show the serial number. I'll do that now. There we are. That's the serial number of my device. I don't really care. I'm not going to do that update firmware will take me to a browsing menu uh, to manually update but yeah, I'm not going to worry about that useful if you want to roll back firmware that sort of thing okay so let's have a look at the general tab here so get information let's give that a click that tells me my but my board was manufactured by evolve this could probably all be changed so if I had a vapor shark that probably say vapor shark there yeah if I had a Hannah mods that probably say Hannah that's uh, a DNA Again, that might say RDNA 200 or something, if it's a vapor shark. I, I, I'm speculating at this point. And when the board was programmed. Now, what we've got here, we've got eight profiles. Uh, so what they do is you use this utility to set up the profiles. And then you can select the profiles use when using the mod. You don't have to have the device connected to a computer in order to select the profiles when you're using it. So I've set one up here called Default DNA. Uh, I've put a little custom graphic on, which you you just import. You just create in the graphics editor. Uh, it's just got a little thumbs up and default. You know, it knocks out pretty quick. Um, so what I've done here on this profile, so the default power on this profile. So every time I select this profile, this is what's going to apply. It's going to be 50 watts at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's going to be a nickel 200 coil. The preheat power is going to be 200 watts. It's going to hit at uh, let's put it at five and the preheat time limit is going to be one second so let's just go over these settings slightly preheat power basically means so these tie in together very closely it's going to attempt to put 200 and use attempt if it hits the 450 degrees uh, temperature limit it will back off uh, at whatever point it applies you know hits that limit um, and it's going to apply that for a maximum of one second so within one second it's going to attempt to put 200 watts into the coil okay now this basically means how aggressive it's going to do it so I've set it a default of five um, if I did it hard it's going to it's going it's going to quickly ramp up to 200 watts where at so the soft of level of one this goes from 1 to 11, by the way. It's very spinal tap. Um, at 1, it's going, to, it's going to be a bit more lazy about it, okay? So that's what that means. Atomizer and analyzer. Cool, you say that a few times when you've had a few jars. This is basically a live reading of what's connected to the device. So uh, I've got uh, nickel coils on there. And it is uh, 
0.281 at the moment. And it says there nominal ohms, 0.281 if it's canful or 0.278 if it's temperature control. Code on, cold ohms, it doesn't really know. Room temperature, well, that's a guesstimate because that's the default setting, but yeah, let's not worry about that now. I've set another profile now called titanium. And this is the beauty of this. You can actually program this to the temperature coefficient of whatever wires you're using. Uh, you've only got two choices here on the core material. I don't know if that's ever going to change in the uh, in a future release of the software. But uh, so I can choose nickel 200 or custom. So what I've done here, if I click on this link here, that will prompt me to go to the Steam Machine website where there is a page on there where I can generate uh, TCR graphs or temperature coefficient res resistance of I forget what it's called now but um, and so I could for example have a titanium coil uh, wire with a nickel Clapton coil wrapped around it and then I could program all that in and then generate this curve um, I could I'm not going to do it on the, this profile here let's go to we call this demo okay uh, 70 watts uh, so, so I say 80 watts 500 let's say 500 yeah and let's set this to custom. What you can do here, you can uh, you can do all sorts of things. You can move stuff up and down. Um, yeah, so curve must be strictly increasing, which it isn't. <laughs> so da da da. So basically, you can't go up and down like a roller coaster. You need to. Uh, there we are. So now that's happy about it. Okay, but. Um, yeah, not too worried about all that. So move, resize, split. So I can. Uh, there's, there's so much you can do here. Yeah. Not saying I really understand that much to be honest. So I leave that pretty much as is. But yeah, that, that that's a profile. So I could upload all that now, and that's now uploading to the mod. So that's the third profile I could select. I probably wouldn't want to use this one because I think it's going to work very well. Um, yeah. So let's move on now. And let's say eight of these I can play with. In fact, if I just set that as default, yeah, yeah it's going to stay there, isn't it? Um, what's special do? Temperature coefficient of resistance. Oh, that's what it means. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I no, I'm not going to mess about with that. Theme. Right, what I can do here, I can save and load a theme or have a default theme, which this is the default theme. So, uh, we've got the welcome screen there, so when you power the device on, uh, that's what will be displayed. So, it's a Evolve DNA 200. And these are graphics, so you can change these out. Secondary, I presume that would, I've not actually tested, but I presume you can put a graphic in there to display after that. So, I could, for example, say uh, Matt's DNA 200 and then powered by Evolve. Of, of that I suppose um, and this is all the screens uh, some of these if you're DNA 40 user will be quite familiar so you'll see that a few different ones here we've got now imbalanced battery and return to researcher uh, and can for max power the, these are these are new to the DNA 200 but uh, you can change all of these out the capture button means that it will capture what's being displayed on the device's screen at that time um, or you can say load a graphic here so that's the one that actually came with the uh, the board from the box because it came from Stealth Vape, and that's one I've made myself. So if I selected that, there we go. So when I turn it on, I'll get a little VTTV logo and the cave. That's quite pleasing, so let's upload that. But yeah, you can change all that, and here we've got two options, a show message or don't show. So... You know, I might not care that I've reached the, reached the maximum power that can fall, uh, that I've set for can fall, so I don't want to show it. Again, I might not care that I'm temperature protected, so I might choose not to show it. Or I can show the temperature instead. Screen. So we can do the orientation left and right, which you can do on the mod anyway. Uh, the battery meter is on default screens. Uh, that is by default or on main screen only on all screens if I so wish error flashes so if I hit the temperature limit it will flash three times and then that's the duration it would do it for um, right so these are the default fields now if you again if you're familiar with a DNA 40 layout this is identical so at the top left hand side uh, that's ignore the the big watts thing at the moment that takes up most of the display but uh, it will show uh, 
so it will show the ohms the voltage required to produce those and wattage oh you know i'm getting myself in a muddle here and i it's seven o'clock in the morning let's start again so it'll show the ohms of the coil connected or the atomizer connected it will show the voltage being applied when you're firing it and it will show the temperature you've got set or what is currently live yeah uh when you've got it plugged into a charger it will show the ohms the usb current and the temperature you can change all this to whatever you like so i might choose to say well i'm charging it i want to see what each what the power the, the voltage level of each individual cell is okay or i just want to see what the battery pack is and uh let's say how much usb power is being applied and uh hmm i want to see what the temperature of the board is yeah or i can set these up as they handily put standard in brackets next to the default one so you can't really mess it up uh, right so we got here um the brightness of the screen so when you're firing it it will fade to 100 100% brightness. So basically, you know when you fire a DNA 40, it lights up. Yeah, it could change that. I could say 50%, 40, 70, whatever. Uh, after taking a, a drag on it, screen active after puff, or I could say screen off afterwards, so straight away it just turns off, or no effects on the idle state. So it's whatever it is when you picked it up. Yeah. Uh, so active brightness is 100%, idle brightness is 63%, charging brightness, it's going to go off. So it's active for six seconds. It's idle after 60 seconds. The fade-in time is quarter of a second, and the fade-out time is eight seconds. Let's go to mod. So here we can see that it is a lithium poly uh, polymer cell, or battery, sorry, three lithium polymer cells. I, if I had a LifePo 4, I could change it to that, or if it's connected up to a permanent power supply, I could change it to that. Uh, the last two do not apply. The watt-hour calculator. So it prompts me here, do I know the total voltage of your battery pack? This is typically printed on it. Well, yes, I do. It is 2200 and it is 11.1 .1 and the nominal voltage. Click on that. It will tell me your battery has a capacity of 24.42 watt hours. Use this value. Yes, please. And there it goes. Uh, the soft, the cell soft cutoff, not soft cell. So, uh, yeah. It's not a sex dwarf. Maybe someone will get that. But uh, anyway, um, you can change this to 3.09 volts. And uh, so what that means, if, if any of the three cells reaches 3.09 volts, or indeed lower, it will not fire until all three cells are at least that. Okay. Charging mode, maximize plus, maximize recharges. I'm not entirely sure what that does. Uh, so I'm going to leave that alone. Charging profile, you can edit that much like you did with the uh, the wire. Or I could do a battery analyzer, which uh, basically promised me that I need to have a resistor on the uh, connected to it that can handle the, the, the power I choose. So in this case, I need to have a resistor that will quite happily accept 40 watts of power for the hour or two it's going to take to generate this curve. I do not have such a thing connected, so I'm counseling that pretty quickly. Okay, but what that will do, that will then generate, it takes, apparently it takes an hour or so to actually do it, and it'll generate a nice curve for us, and you can save that out, and that sort of thing. Uh, so can full power limit, so currently this is set to 100 watts limit, so if I was to put a straight can full coil on here, I could not fire this any higher than 100 watts. Um, now, of course, I can change that up to 200 if I so choose, but I'm leaving that as it is for the time being. And the mod resistance. Um, so what you can do, you can measure, you can get your multimeters out and you can measure the resistance of the wires between the board and the 510 connector, all this sort of thing. Take that into account and pop that in there so you get an absolutely accurate reading of your atomizer. Um, of course, this really is aimed at proper manufacturers. I could sit there and meter it all out, but frankly, I can't be bothered. It's working fine for me. The ohm lock range. Now, we've all seen the um, new ohms or new, new coil up down, no, yes, left, right, that sort of thing, yeah? Basically, what that means is if the coil is within 25% of the previous coil, then it's not entirely sure, so it's going to it's going to prompt you, okay? That's what that means. Now, this is, this is new. Uh, mechanical up and down buttons. So once you change the orientation of the screen left and right, you can actually choose the orientation of the buttons as well. 
So if I was to choose its left-handed mode and I want the up button to suddenly become the down button, I can choose that. Uh, then you've got thermal profiles and things here. So you use case USB. So basically how much would the case heat up when it's charging USB? Uh, what's the room temperature? What's the maximum minimum ambient temperature you can fire at? All this sort of thing. Um, I'm leaving that as it is. Research. So what you can do in research mode is you can have it pump data out through uh, serial or into uh, into a CSV format. Uh, it can set the core resistance to be automatic or locked, so it, it will only work with a core VAT resistance. Yeah. Um, the the power I can lock it at say 10 to 20 watts or 20 to 20. So uh, the subject this this is primarily used for for uh, people like Dr. Fosselinos which I presume this is really what this is aimed at. Um, so basically they can say, yes, you can adjust the temperature, but only between 20, uh, 10 and 20 watts, or you ain't adjusting the temperature, uh, the power, sorry. You're not adjusting the power at all. So you can either have, say, you could have a range of, you can set your power to 10 to 50 watts, and you can choose what you're comfortable between those. Or you're only vaping at 50 watts, and that's all, you know, so uh, there we go. Temperature limit, again, very similar to the power. Um, set it to 300 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius. Um, yeah, so very similar to power, so you can, or configurable, yeah. A puff limit, so I can enable that. You can have a maximum of 20 puffs, yeah. Uh, energy limit, so that is in joules. And time limit, so each puff would be however many seconds. And then you can apply and break and check a research seal. So that's quite nice. So it's, it gives some validity to tests there. Anyway, that's all of that bit covered. Let's have a, a device monitor. This is where things get very interesting, at least for me. So what you can see there, we can see my uh, my battery pack is currently running at uh, 11.9192 volts. It's on the cusp of charging over there. Uh, and you can see the cells are currently sitting at a nice balanced 3.97 volts apiece. You will see, and I have spent some time looking at this, just watching it charge. It, it charges one cell, then another cell, then another cell. It just goes through 0.1 volt every time. And it just keeps going through until it will reach you know, the maximum charge. Uh, you can see there the amount of current it's drawing from my USB connector. It is capable of, of drawing one amp. Um, now, it seems my laptop is only capable of outputting half an amp. So that's why you're seeing that. Um, but this is what most people are going to be interested in, so uh, let's do this. He says getting the mod ready in his hand. Okay, so let's just have a drag and we'll see what happens. Things will appear. There we go. Let's just pause that. So what we can see here, this green line, is the uh, the amount of power that was applied. Okay. This red line is the temperature that happened. This doesn't make an awful lot of sense unless I reach hit the temperature set and power set. Let's unpause that. So keep an eye on this line here. So that is the ceiling of temperature. This is the ceiling of power. Right, so what we what do we see here? We see the preheat kicking in. Okay? That's what that happened there. As soon as I pressed that fire button, the preheat kicked in and took it right up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And then, well, it didn't take it right up, but it basically, well, you see what happened here. It's, it's getting to the point where this is climbing up a bit high. It hit its, its time limit and then dropped back down to 50 watts of power. Uh, in the meantime, the temperature is climbing. That would help if I um, took a vape with that not being paused, wouldn't it? Right, so this will be a higher temperature now because I've taken a few draws on it, so the, the, the core temperature has increased. And that's about as long a draw as I could really take there. This is a 30 second time scale, yeah? So this is probably about three or four seconds. Um, in fact, you can't select time, can you? Oh, you can, there we go. This will be interesting. There we go. Right. 
My cobble's getting a bit dry, actually. Um, so you can see there, it was climbing up. It never, uh, at no point did it ever hit the, the 450 degree temperature limit that I put in, um, which might be beneficial if I was to uh, set temperature, which you can do here. So let's set that to 400. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to close it. I'm going to connect another device, actually. Um, just because, and I figure you guys might want to see this. So I'm connecting the, uh, this is the mod that I made on the live stream on Sunday. Yep, and I've called it live stream. You can rename it here. Okay, when you connect it, you can hit the rename. So I've not set any profiles on this at all. This is as default, okay? Let's go back to device monitor. So we can see here, and I've got a sub tank on here. I've got it set for 25 watts and at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, a bit of indigestion. So let's have a look at all this. Let's leave the battery pack power there as well. So that that black line, keep an eye on that because that is your battery sack basically. Um, this again is the temperature ceiling. This is the power ceiling. So you can see there, it basically applied 25.02 watts of power, okay, the 0 0.02, yeah, whatever. So that was basically a cold coil. Let's try it again. It's climbing, but I'm not hitting the, hitting the temperature limit. Let's set the temperature now to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I can, in, I can choose uh, Celsius there if I like as well, but... Uh, so that's just instantly dropped. So there, that gives us a good picture. So we can see that it's reached 399 degrees Fahrenheit, 390 degrees point nine zero at that point. You can see there it was over ever so slightly. You can see where it hit the ceiling, it backed the power off. Yeah, and at the end of it, when I was to keep in order to keep me at 400 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit, it was actually applying 13, well, I call it 14 watts, shall we, in order to, to keep that temperature limit. Okay, so what it will do, it's it's a bit more advanced than the DNA 40 where it does stop. This one actually uh, just lets you keep going, but it just backs the power off. So now let's change the temperature to. Uh, 450. That's raised up again. So there we can see that that's pretty much bang on. In order to keep it at 450 degrees, 25 watts seems to be adequate for this coil. Um, so it's keep this let me keep the uh, the wattage. Now I could set the power. I want that at, say 30 watts. That's raised up now, yeah. So we can see here, let's pause that again. That is actually, because I've set the temperature limit the same, I kept that the same, it's actually backed off. So it raised up to the full 30. Uh, but as soon as it hit the temperature limit, it backed it off. So in order to keep it at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, it's actually, again, giving me 25 watts of power thereabouts, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the live ohms and the cold ohms. So you can actually see here the resistance of the coil changing as I take in a draw. So what that's doing here, it, that's 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 the base cold ohms, yeah. And uh, so this is the live ohms. So you can see there the actual resistance increased the more power that's put into the coil so you can really go in depth with this stuff and there's stuff down here as well that how much energy is being consumed by the last puff so that's 19.08 watt hours uh standard deviations this sort of thing you can really go in depth on that but uh yeah that's pretty much that so let's just show you one final thing and this is a real nerdgasm time here serial terminal you can script this thing uh so if i was to type in p equals get sp that shows me how much what the power is set for if i set 
T equals get SP, that is the temperature set for. Right, so I can now change that to P equals 25. Yeah, now I've changed P equals get SP. Why isn't that working? P equals 20, P equals set 25, I think. Uh, so P equals get SP. Oh, you know what, I can't remember the command. But um, you yeah, basically type stuff in there and you can set things up. I'm sure P equals 25 is correct. No, okay, whatever. Oh, hang on, do I have to put in 25W? Yeah, that's it. Right, okay, so and I can put in T equals... What did I have it set for? Four, uh, 450, so 400 F. And C equals get. So there we go. That's now changed that to that. So if I go into the, uh, the device monitor again, you actually see these values are now changed to what I just set it to in the terminal. So yeah, that's a bit of a nergasm there. Um, it's not something you need to use, but I, I like that sort of thing. So there we go. That is uh, a look at the, uh, the eScribe software. And... Uh, Back over to me in the studio, I think.